joined right now by a very special guest coming off of his time at American Ninja Warrior. We are here with Mark Farrell. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Blake. It's good to be here. Um, yeah, my experience with American Ninja Warrior was a blast. If you caught me on uh, last night, Ninja Warrior, uh, yeah, Mark Farrell, AKA Ninja Beta 2.0. I was on for semifinals and it was amazing. <laughs> you brought so much energy to the course itself. It was so fun to watch you compete. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience on the show, specifically the semifinals that we all got to see last night? Uh, my experience on the show uh, was definitely an eye-opening experience in compar comparison to uh, Houston. Houston was inside a dome. Uh, when I was at Universal Studios, it was outside. It was a little bit colder felt the winds, it was raining, so we had the elements against us, and you have the lights, the cameras were in the middle of Universal Studios, but I had tunnel vision, and when Ninja Beta 2.0 gets ready, it's time to bring the noise, that's all I gotta say. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about fighting the elements. It was raining, it was cold, you told me that it was kind of in the middle of the night. Could you kind of explain what was going on uh, behind the scenes? So, uh, American Ninja Warrior has to follow a certain rule set. So they're trying to get out the kids who are 16. They got to get out uh, under 12, uh, 12 in the, in the morning at night. So they're trying to get, get those guys out of there. And at the same time, we have rain. There was thunder going on as well, right around probably 12. And it started coming down hard. And they have to shut down the course. And then they have to clean it. So it probably rained for a good hour and everybody was kind of worried when they're running. And when it was raining also, you can feel this, uh, just this cold, uh, it just started breaking down uh, Ninja Warriors uh, after they got cleaned up and then Ninja Warriors started running. People you wouldn't normally see fall on different obstacles were falling all over the place after that. Well, I gotta think, I mean, it's a lot of grip strength. And so if things are wet, it probably affects that. And then also trying to get up, you know, maybe the warped wall, you're probably sliding down that as well. So it makes it super difficult, I would assume. Yeah, you're affecting, it's affecting your grip. It's affecting um, your mental game. You know, you're like, oh man, this is cold. At the same time, you know, your blood circulation isn't working as, as uh, as effective as possible. So you're finding yourself running in place, trying to stay warm. Luckily, they have heaters all over the place, which was accommodating and they got some food available. But at the same time, you're not on your A game. You know, the, your grip, uh, the cold affects you significantly. Yeah, and that's kind of some of the things that you might even need to prepare for. I mean, only the, the top of the line are able to, you know, get to the semifinals like you did. And so you have to be ready for every single possible outcome. And so I have to ask you, how much were you training for this prior to uh, you getting to the semifinals? Uh, I was probably train. I've been training for, you know, nine years. Uh, so obviously I've been training a while, but when it comes to probably about three or four months prior to a competition, especially, you know, American Ninja Warrior, I don't know if I'm gonna get my chance again. I, I put on my A game, I'm training about three plus hours a day. Uh, and I train in elements, I train the heat. So I don't train the cold, but I, I try to make sure that, you know, my body is under strain and I'm trying to conquer obstacles while my body is strained at the same time. What inspired you to start doing this type of training? It's such a specific type of athletic training and a specific way to uh, get in shape, I guess I should say. What inspired you to get into this? Um, obviously, my, uh, the trainer uh, who owns the gym, Ninja Warehouse, Carson Voiles, um, he's a, a big step towards, inspires any kind of ninja that comes his way. And then also Lauren Ball, Filipino ninja. He made it on semifinals. Look at, holler at your boy, Lauren Ball. Uh, he inspired me to even start Ninja Warrior and look at him. He's just flying down the course. Uh, he's about my age too. He's almost 40 as well. So guys like him that just don't let age affect them or their ability are just inspirational to me, you know? And you're inspirational to so many as well. I mean, not to mention, I mean, your age, which you aren't, you know, a 16 year old kid doing this specific course. You're, you're a little bit older than that. And then on top of that, you also are, like the announcers were saying, a little bit heavier. You don't have the super short, small body type that makes it almost easier to go about this course. What is the mental capacity that you have to have to be able to kind of go against all the odds? Uh, yeah, obviously I'm breaking through stereotypes. Uh, I don't have the ideal body for an uh, American Ninja Warrior, but you know, 
I believe you can do anything if you set your mind to it. Um, I definitely have to work a little harder. Being at 200 pounds isn't the ideal weight, so I do a lot of stretching. So those at home that don't believe that stretching doesn't work, I beg to differ. I do <laughs> yoga. There's yoga out there. Yoga is definitely beneficial. Trust me. The One of the big things I wanted to ask you about as well is specifically what it looks like to be on this show, what it takes. What was the process like just to get onto the show? The process to get on the show is uh, your video. You better have, you can, you can have and be gifted in any kind of athletic ability and then apply and then get rejected because you didn't have a good enough story to back you up. Uh, story makes a better, uh, if you're if you were submitting a video it would you would definitely want to submit more story than athletic ability probably 70 percent more story um and then you know me prepping up for that video you know i had to br i had to put 130 percent effort into it getting married all my energy all, all everything that i could all my blood just poured into this video and then it just became a beautiful masterpiece i definitely would like to share that with you it's definitely a, a creative moment for me and i'm going to bring part two already working on my video already because i know how much time and effort it takes yeah so this next year what are some of your plans what are some of the things that you're looking forward to as you are hoping to get back on the show and as you're preparing to create this video um i'm part two is i'm actually going to get married this uh this year uh, to my fiance, Michelle, Mwah, I love you. Um, we're doing a, a tango dance, a tango dance and a, a huge lift at the end. And we're having get cameras galore film us. We're, we're t having professionals teach us how to do all the, the lift and the, 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 all the moves. So we're taking it very seriously. And I'm gaining a little bit of weight just so I can, you know, make sure I'm doing everything how it should be. And then, um, as far as the video goes too, I'm putting all my athletics in there. Going to bring the noise, obviously. I'm going to going to do a sneak peek to the New Jersey that I created with as well. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited, Blake. Let well, me tell you. Mark, thank you so much for joining us here on the show today. We really appreciate the time. We can't wait for your energy next year as well. Good luck with your wedding and good luck getting back on the show next year. We are going to be right back here on Mountain Connections in just a little bit.